Coming up with something refreshingly different, I hope. Um, I want to do this rather lovely scene of the two sisters uh, in a beach on Provence that I took about 14 years ago now. One of my favourites, don't think it's a small one, it sold very quickly, but I just love the colours. And having done all these nighttime scenes, have a need to do something daytime, a little bit more vibrant and refreshing perhaps. Although the others are very beautiful in their own way. So I'm going to have a go at this one. Again, I'm going to use the bowl as normally I'd have done this with broken colour, very impressionist. But I'm going to experiment and do this with the roller at first to get the background colours and everything in. And then I'll go back to my brushes and maybe even sponges and textures. We'll see. I want to explore and experiment with this one a bit. Actually, it would make a very nice one with textures, wouldn't it, as well, built up. But I don't think I'm going to do that today. Let's just take a look at the colours on this, shall we? And the difference in these colour hues we've been talking about. In other words, a colour hue is something where there is warm and cool between um, the ranges of one colour. So we've got blue here, a very warm blue here, which is a purple blue, warm being towards the reds or fire, and then a cooler blue, which is more towards the um, ice or the, the greeny blues. So the, the turquoise blues here, these are cooler. This is a warmer, pinky blue, and of course it works both ways because it can work from purple to turquoise in warm to cool blues but it also can work from purple to a much warmer red to a cadmium red say in the reds so if we look at the purple here which is a cool red we come through a, a, an orangey pink here which is a warm red so we've got the warm to cool or the warm to cool blues and then we've got the cool to warm reds quite quite different and we're going to play with these various different mixtures of color hues as well as the colors themselves if we want something to look warmer or brighter in brighter we can put next to it something darker in smooth we can make something rougher next to it with warm and cool, then we can play the opposites of those. Something cooler next to a warm colour will make the warm colour uh, be much warmer. As Constable did in his paintings, when he uh, put a little red dot or a little red figure somewhere in a green landscape, because the red shone out almost like fluorescent paint, and uh, the red figure made the green seem greener. And then we're talking the opposites in the colour circle as well. So it's not just colour hue of warm to cool, it's also the opposites in colour circles as the red and the green. And we're going to play the opposites in colour circles here. Yellow and purple are opposites. So you see here the vibrance between the two of those. So we're going to play all of these technical things, all of these colour chemistry things, which are part of our armoury in this battle of the painting. Now, as I was saying, I would normally work this up with a brush in a um, broken colour technique. Uh, I've done a landscape which I've shown you uh, in France using the rollers. And uh, I've done several other pictures using the rollers, obviously the, the street scenes and so on. Um, interior scenes as well. So it now falls to having a go at doing a beach scene. Use a way, large brush to start with, and uh, although I'm tempted to hit it with the brush only because I do love working with the brushes, I'm going to go at it with the roller at first.
and I can either put on the warmer pink here or the um, top colour first. What I'm going to do is hit it with um, the cerulean blue first and turquoise and I want to push the colours so obviously I'm going to take it a little bit beyond the colours that are there or are easily seen on the photograph. I'll take my sponge and uh, work it into the brush first as I showed in the last video and we'll just check that colour out yeah nice colour want a bit more of that plenty more of that in fact you just quite a lot of paint doing it this way probably used to slightly less using the um, the brush but now um, after I've done this I'm going to go back and put a bit of masking tape across here because I want an absolutely straight although I can get it pretty straight with the roller I want an absolutely sharp and straight line in this case, almost hot ish So I'm going to come across here first of all and just give it a coat. I'm going to go back and put more coats on afterwards. We're already getting a slight variation in, in colour in the sky. We're having um, a little bit of different blues on, on the roller. about some turquoise in a minute, put a bit of that into it. Just for the moment let's get this medium cool blue on. Cerulean is one of our coolest and lightest blues until we get into the turquoises. I must make sure that the canvas is totally covered. I don't want any white canvas showing through. It's interesting uh, to find the effects that we can get putting a roller over another rolled colour be quite impressive. It's almost like doing a glaze because it goes across quite lightly. So I just want a base colour first of all of this cerulean. It would be nice using these really bright colours today going back to daylight again instead of doing nighttime scenes. Yeah. I'm going to go over that with a bit of turquoise in a minute but this is just to get the basic warmth. What I'm going to do is add a fraction a little bit of magenta to that, make it a little bit warmer. So I'm already adding another colour over this one, and this is a slightly warmer blue. Then I've added a little bit of magenta to the blue, just to let that glow. I'm already getting a lovely feeling of a glow look. I want to go back um, with that cerulean. Yeah. It's wet now, it's got a bit of water on it. Okay, I want to start working into my turquoises now. I'll just dry down a bit. I'll right, start working this pinking down here, which is rather lovely. It's quite heavy up here, just blowing through a bit. To see if this works. I mean, I may have to come back to do an impression this piece in the end. I know what I want. Get the feeling of the mist coming up in that edge before I put up a darker area of green there. I'm planning ahead and there's like a watercolour in the way and that good watercolourist will plan his battle ahead. He'll know where it's going to leave his lights to start with. The darks are going in. Okay, I'm going to want the turquoise now. I don't want anything to go more yellow than that. Let's just try that out. Just lightly first. Get it onto the roller. Bit of the old colour, yeah, letting that blue show through, just almost glazing it over. Let's be down here where it's much stronger, right along the bottom here, where I'm going to go across with masking tape later, round this. These hills in the distance, just letting colours glow one through another. It's almost like the impressionist broken colour technique in the pattern. I'm letting one colour glow through another here. So it's a lovely glow to it. I take that along the bottom of the hills a bit as well, just along here. Now I'm going to make slightly lighter turquoise. So I'll take that same turquoise, a bit of lemon yellow, and then some white. I 
We'll put that onto the roller. Now, though it's got more lemon yellow in it, lemon yellow is a cool yellow compared to a cadmium yellow. So we're still on our cools and warms. I'm going to bring that in just lightly over everything again, letting one colour glow through another, right through down here. Gives this hazy tropical feeling south of France. And hopefully when I get the deeper colours down here against this, this will start to make more sense. This feeling of luminosity and warmth and then the, the balmy, the cool sea air coming in. Keep working with these colours until you're happy. As I say, I'd be, probably be happier myself if I was using just the impressionist technique I'm used to. But I'm happy enough to give this a go. Marks in the same direction if we can help it. We're trying to keep a, an overall effect of light. Blend one into another. When I'm working this technique, with an impressionist technique, I blend one band into another. So it's a little bit different this time. Right, we'll see how that goes. Just want to go back with a little bit of the cerulean I was using earlier. Yes, you can see the difference it makes. So we'll work backwards and forwards with these colours, warms and cools, until we get the effect we want. It's going to go a fraction warmer. I'm going to take a bit of a touch of ultramarine into that. Right, now I'm going to let that dry and tape off this bit before we go on to doing the working the sea colours downwards. So that's where we've got to at the moment with those blues. Right, well, I've now masking taped up to that line of the horizon. That to be a nice sharp edge, so it's most important that this edge is really tight to the canvas. I'm going to now go on and start painting the, the deeper blue lines down here of the sea and work my way downwards. So for that, I'm going back to a nice deep turquoise with a little touch of cobalt into it. See if I can get that working on my roller. In some ways I'd rather be working with a brush now. But um, I'm more used to a brush and working more quickly than this with a brush. Going into it. My roller's still a little bit wet. Nice sharp edge across here. I don't know what that is, but a bit whatever it is. Now I'm to go a bit deeper still, especially at that top edge. So I'm going to take some ultramarine now. A little touch of the green into the ultramarine. So a wee touch of the turquoise into that ultramarine. To go quite a bit darker, in fact darker than the ultramarine, so I'm going to go down to a bit of pressure into it as well. I've got to be quite careful with the roller now, I don't want to go too much over the top here, it's just going to go along this edge here, lighter areas of this. I'm just not getting the sparkle I want with the roller alone, so I'm going to have to do brush work. There's no problem, you keep changing the colour on the roller without washing the roller to a degree. A little bit more ultramarine now, over that cobalt. Right, let that dry down a bit. Okay, let's take away that tape and see what we've got before we carry on rolling up the colours below and above it. Now I just want to 
break this sharp line just a little in places. It's just a little bit too strong. It's not easy either when you store all this white canvas because it makes things look as if they're too strong, but hopefully you won't have to make too many adjustments later. So we continue building up these colours, just gently, getting across some light wave shapes now. The one problem is that the roller tends to jam the bottom. So we need to We can just come back in with a smaller brush and just put in the smaller wave shapes much much later here. And I've got white to put back on here afterwards. Get more yellow into that. Lemon yellow into that. A little touch of white. See if we can get that nice turquoise yellow feel of a wave coming over here. need to get a base colour going on here to be able to add all of our colours over the top rather than because I can't be putting on individual little colours with this such small areas other than this I do it with a brush. I've got to start getting using this as a base colour to get and work over it this turquoise. Add a lot of turquoise in here and the other blues into that. worked up so I need a lot a lot of paint now to really start building up the background here. And now I'm just using a direct cerulean light green mix which is very similar. I just leave a little bit of light showing in places where I know I've got to use more light just so I know where my drawing is as well. They say in some ways I'd rather be using a brush, but it's an interesting challenge and it will show you how versatile this way of working with a roller is. How are you too? So we're just getting the base colours worked out at the moment as to where I want what to go. And once I've got that, then I can start to work on. the colours over the top. At the moment we've got sunshine coming across the canvas so I may have to wait until tomorrow to continue. Well typically in them the sun's suddenly gone out so I'll carry on working a bit more today then. I feel a lot lighter as well. Let's get this going first. There's a lot of colour in here actually. It's going to take a while to build up. I wouldn't normally put the lights on until the end, but I want to actually establish just where my, my lighter colours are at the moment. And I can come back in and out of this with colours whenever I please anyway. So I'm not stuck by any means. I think I might paint in uh, basic colours on these just to get rid of the whiteness so I can see again what I'm doing more with my other colours because this white does get in the way. Now for the moment I just like to do a basic underpainting of a colour that will be able to be painted over later. A deep mauve using the lizard and crimson and blues up first here. Over the whole thing. Remember we can cut in and around this later. We don't have to worry about the drawing exactly at the moment because I can cut in and around this whole thing. 
splashing away here, I remember 14 years ago, what a lovely time it was and a lovely visit I had with my sculptor's friend Pascal, who lives in Provence. I did a few nice paintings at the time, one of my favourite seascapes as well. I seem to remember, let me show it to you here now. ever seascapes. It was done in about three hours on the seafront there and I had a lot of interest from locals but I was prepared to pay the money at the time but it certainly sold since and I've had a few buyers after it since. And there we go, now what we've got to do is See how I'm playing these warms now to make the cooler seem cooler. Something that will need tightening up again. And let's set that dry off for a little while. Well, another day. Here we are back in this painting. We've got the underpainting done. Now I want to gradually start working up these other colours. Bit more in the turquoises and, and greens here and we're going to go lighter and lighter and add the warms in as well. Now of course on this one I'm really pushing the colours but let's look at a few of my past uh, beach paintings where I haven't done so and then ones where I have actually pushed it on even further. So we'll take first of all one of my first beach skates that I did with my two young daughters many years ago in Bridlington and a few little paintings around that period and then we'll go on to some later paintings that I did in France and using the Mediterranean colours and pushing these colours much more, which give us more a feeling of um, the atmosphere and the light. In between I'll show you one I did just off Neighbourthorpe Beach, which uh, a lot of you have found quite attractive and have made comments about in the past. Of these children running in front of their grandfather. So we'll look at these normal colours first, and then we'll look at um, some brighter ones after that, and then straight back into this painting. Eh? Right then, first colour this morning, very light green with a little bit of turquoise. Start to pick up some of these white colours again here, using the edge of the roller. The sparkle going through here. I haven't got enough green, green, blues yet. I want to get more of these greens going through here. You put it on your brush, you put it on your roller. Use it. If it's somewhere else, put it in. One colour plays against another. Um, you see, one thing we did find earlier on was the difference in. Um, the white canvas and the painting. You were having a job to see this painting as you are now with the light behind it because the camera is making these colours darker than they actually are. So they appear darker than they do on the photograph which is next to it. Um, the photograph is obviously the photograph is enhanced and, and putting and in front the photograph has been superimposed so it's showing the correct colours but this one is um, comparative to the colours around it, the light around it. So I'm going to have to artificially bring this out for you to see the correct colours. Apple, P, Green, C, as a poem once said. I'd have noticed that P, Green, further south when I was doing those pictures down at Worthing. This one, for instance, this pastel and watercolour that I did down at Worthing. These two paintings where the sea was almost a P, Green. Beautiful colours. I'm not 
canvas showing here that I don't want to show, so I'm rubbing the feet with the edge of the roller into that now, trying to lose that horrible. I'm still not entirely happy with these light greens that I'm getting up here. I'm going to bring back a bit more of a lighter turquoise into here. And I think sometimes um, my own adage of it's not always a thing you think is wrong that is wrong must be true of my own paintings. Because I'm looking at this thinking I've not quite got the highlights there. But I'm going to go back and put in some more darks and hope that that actually might do the job. <coughs> you can just start to see, hopefully you can just start to see what I'm trying to do now. Oh, we want some warms yet. We haven't got any warms in there yet, and that's very important. So I'm going to take some yellow ochre. Just as it is, first of all. And see how that works. Go in and round. I've got the feeling of sand. I need to go a bit darker. I'm going to take a bit of, um, or warmer, should I say, as well as darker, and um, start to play with a bit of the burnt sienna into there. Now that's interesting because the burnt sienna is going to be a colour that we use um, figures as well. Reflected light underneath. Make a glitter and crimson and purple mix really dark. Use the purple first and then go back into the glitter. So I want to go really dark down and around here with some of these more really deep red. But you see how I'm playing with purples against the yellows now. I'm putting in warms against cools. I'm putting in a colour like this, it's a strong series of, of colours as well. It's bound to make a huge difference here. Just as I'm seeing how far I can go, just using the roller. So I'm using ultramarine now as a dark. To come across the face against and play against the warmth of these colours. Ultramarine, trying to get it purer and purer. I work on. Not easy to get the angles I want at times. here and just tidy some of this up in places. So we haven't got to put more light in in this case, it's putting more dark in that mattered to make the light seem lighter. It's the opposite, rough against smooth, light against dark, cool against warm. Right, I'm just going to make a very, very cool light cream by using just white and a little touch of lemon yellow. We're going to need what, light colours, pinks and creams for this. But just want to do this before I move on to brushes because I think I'm almost done with the roller. I don't think I can do a lot more with the roller today by using the texture of the roller rather than a brush. We'll just capture the tops of some of these waves and get the feeling of the light on the spray. You can see you can get a quite nice spray effect by just dragging the roll a little bit. I want to come back with a sponge as well, do a bit of textural work with the sponge too on this, because the roller in itself is not going to be enough. Alright, I did a bit more work on the figures. Alright, I'll just try a little bit of orange and magenta. It's not easy to do because the roller is very wet now. Just cleaned it all up. 
that orange and magenta and a little bit of white. Let's just see if we're getting the right sort of warm colour I want there for the back of the girl. Highlights alone. Now, I think it, it is about time to start getting in with the brush because I need to really work into a bit more of the shapes now. Right, well, now I'm onto my brushes at last, looking forward to this bit. So I've got two filberts here, and you see how the filberts, when turned, are thin one way and wider the other. They've got a nice rounded end, which means that we've got lots of chance to do fine details that way or heavier work that way. So if I want to work under here, I can do quite large strokes or very fine strokes, which is what I'm about to do. I've also got some sea sponges, uh, various textures, which I'm going to try and use on some of the foam later on. Ready now. And let's see what we're going to go with this. So I want to work on these figures almost straight away and I've got to pull together edges. So if I start on those figures and I've really got to start pushing colours now. So let's start to look at these Mugodi magentas and things that are going on here. And we can start to play with those straight away. I want an impression of something. But we can do that, as I say, by just letting this colour glow behind here. Now, the orange and cool. Let's take some orange and just look at this area of the arm. It's not quite right in drawing yet. We'll just work on the diffraction. That comes around there and out here a bit more. Take some bouncing out of there. Add a bit more warmth into that. I'm going to get on here, I've got a feeling. And we'll just put a bit of that across the shoulder here, straight on, and look at the vibrance that makes straight away. Because we haven't got many strong warms, immediately that gives us this warmth. I have a bit of cadmium red. Take it down a fraction, and we'll just put a little bit of that on the end of her nose here. Just see what that does. There's little bits of highlights now that we can pull the whole picture together with. A bit further up here. So I like say the right colours are the right shapes. If we don't get them in the right shape, you've got to go back and get it right. So that wrist is important. We've got to come down here with that wrist and across there. And of course, if those colours are there, they're going to be coming down to here as well. So we've got to start linking. Now you wouldn't think there'd be green down here, but in fact it is reflecting from the sea. And we've got a nice bit of green happening down all the way down the leg there. Coming down into the swimming costume here a bit. Very dark green going on. Look at the colour that then changes. In green in the hair, you wouldn't think it, but it's there. We've got to look for these colours to make them work. Put it in a small brush. We're going to start looking at um, cutting in the background here. And by cutting around a shape, we can also draw. This is, you can get this right in a couple of strokes, or you can struggle with it all day. It's um, those awkward things, you, you just can't tell when you come to do it. And it either works or it doesn't, so I'll keep playing around with this until I get it right. And I will do, but uh, it's not going to be that easy. It's still not quite right in the face, is it? Uh, we've got to work on it. So no two marks can make or break it. It is drawing, it's drawing with colour, but it is drawing still. As I say, I'm exploring all the time, I'm playing with these colours. It's all new to me, I mean, I haven't done this painting in this way before, so I'm having to explore and experiment a bit. You'll get there. See, once I get these little bits done, the rest will be fairly flowing. 
doesn't have to be so exact. Isn't that the beauty of uh, doing figure painting? We don't have to be exact with anything else but the figures. So some things in, I guess, um, painting uh, buildings where it might be as awkward. As I say so often, it's not always the thing you think is wrong that is. So we have to look now, try and work out. So I play the greens here now against the flesh. It'll bring out the warm colours more. I'm putting a bit of deep green down into there to give a shadow into this mauve yellows. Actually, when you even look at the uh, arm on the photograph, it does look a bit weird, but uh, I've got to get it right here, obviously. Right, a little go with the sponge. I just want to make up some very nice, very nice. Take a little bit of sponge and see what we've got. I've got any sponge that I trust. Let's have a look. Yes, there we go. That's all right. And we'll just foam up around here with this very light blue at first. Nice colour, that light violet. I'm going to put a little bit of opera rose with it now. And let's start using the creams with the texturing. Just carefully cropping it in here, sparkling across all the water. I'm going to use my smaller brushes to finish off because I'm down to my pure white now. I just want to literally touch up with the pure white here and there to really bring the colours out. So what I'm going to do is come in here with the white. Just bring out some of these. As you can see, still highlighting. I've used my light colours and I'm finishing off with white. But don't go straight to white got a student of mine at the moment that just sent me a nice picture of uh, landscape and sky and so on. But people tend to go straight for white, green trees, brown soil, white uh, clouds. They're not, they're very light colours. Wherever there's light, there's going to be a colour because the light will be a certain colour. So if it's sunlight, it's going to be very light cream clouds and so on. If it's uh, a sunset, then you're going to have Finger clouds, and so it will work out if the clouds are reflecting light. I'm on my last stages of this, I, and I hope that I'm enjoying it. It's, uh, it's time to pull it together now. Just putting in these last pieces of white to play against the other lighter colours as well. Now when I finish this painting what I'm going to do is show you a whole series of beatings that I've done over the years in more than one medium. So I'm going to show you some watercolours of beat scenes, pastels of beat scenes, so you can see the different way that I've used the mediums as well to explore the potential of the, the beaches. I'm now going to come down to my little brush, my little round brush. And we'll just try and finish off with a few lovely whites. I'm not doing photorealism, even though I'm doing all this detail, I'm just doing impressions still. I haven't broken my mould at all. I'm still following my heart and painting about light and colour and play, texture, warms and cools, the colours, the paint, the mood, the atmosphere. It's all still just here. And now we're back to the pea green sea again that we started talking about when I first started the painting. And I think you know we're about there. 
a little bit more warmth the larger brush in the front a little bit more purple mauve here and I think you know I think I'm about there I just want to go a little bit lighter foreground with some of these light blue greens a little bit more here maybe and there we are, that's just bringing out that surf towards us. Having done that, we need to a bit of swirling around a bit more down here. So what colour are we going to assign it is the next problem. I think a light blue. There we go. Close a look at it, shall we? Feel the wind in the surf? I hope so. There we are, another one in the secret series of these two girls enjoying their little secret lives on the beach. <laughs> 